janky, dude. What airplane is that? Uh, that, that bit. Put a finger in there. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for watching again. Today, we are going over the brakes and the decision to bring the Miata back to life, really. So, so after Sam kind of talked me into not hating the car anymore, we spent a day taking the bumper and the other fender, the driver's side fender off, and just getting it all cleaned up after the videos that Andy and I did, taking the whole front end apart. <laughs> so janky, dude. Yeah, and so then we got to move back into the regular progression that the car was going to have in the first place, which was I had already had the pow or the stop tech brakes, the ceramic brakes, and the slotted rotors. So we finally we finally got an opportunity to spend a Saturday doing the brakes. All right, guys. So what is up? We just came from Will yesterday. We had a great opportunity to run this guy around the little quarter mile oval, but we got to take this thing to the next level. And the next level is doing the brakes and rotors all the way around. So I got power stop rotors and pads. We're gonna jack the whole Miata up, do the whole set, put her back down. And when we put her back down, we're gonna put the new uh, Bassett racing wheels that we got with the hand cooked tires, the much fatter, I think we got eight inch wide tires. So it's gonna be much better grip, much better handling, and much better stopping for the next time we go to the track. So we started with the front and everything was pretty smooth. Once upon a time, we did try to get them off, but we didn't have all the proper tools. We didn't have a torque gun. And being like a 27-ish year old car, there is some rust. So we needed a torque gun. We needed the proper tools to get everything off. And like every other thing to work on on the Miata, half the reason for owning a Miata, everything was super easy to do. As far as the front goes, the front rotors came off easily. The front pads came off easily. The new Power Stop or Stop Tech kit fit perfectly, little anti-seize here and there, got it all buttoned up, got the old wheels back on, and then we moved to the back, and that's where we ran into some bumps. The back ones had never, the rotors had never been replaced. That rotor was just not coming off the car. Sam and I pounded it with a hammer for probably a half hour. Then I went to Harbor Freight and bought a bigger hammer. That hammer wasn't big enough. Then Sam went back and got even a bigger hammer. So it was a four pound hammer at the end of the day. We were swinging at the passenger side rotor of this car and it was not budging. It was not moving whatsoever. Eventually, the rotor broke in half. Uh, we're okay. doing great today, guys. Um, so we went and got a hammer because we needed to knock this, this rusty rotor off. We hit it a couple times and it broke, which is interesting. This, <laughs> Bro. this fucking sucks. Whatever higher, higher, higher fucking power you believe in, that higher power has decided that this car is not going to the track tomorrow. That's accurate. <laughs> So the disc portion of the rotor broke off of the center hub portion of the rotor, which neither of us have ever seen in our lives, but a rotor should never break. Even when a wheel comes off, a rotor will not break. It was pretty dark at that point, and we had been spending, I think, like six hours on a brake job that really should have taken maybe two or three. We wanted to also put the new wheels on because we had the new wheels. After doing the brakes, just said to ourselves, we'll just put the old wheels and tires on. Maybe in the, maybe in the light. All right. Second. Pull for sound. What airplane is that? Is that Superman? <laughs> it's a bird. All right, so good morning. Here we are today. It is definitely the day after we did um, the brakes. We're putting these on. Putting these bad boys on today. They're beefy boys. Beefy, eight inches wide. We're doubling up in size. We went from four inches. We upgraded. Now we're at eight inches. Hand cooks. The guys at the tire shop were literally, four of them asked me, yo, they were like, what are those tires? And what are they going on? And when I said Miata, they all went like this. Cause it's a lot of grip for a little baby Miata. <laughs> Sam and I made some really poor drawings on a piece of paper and spent about an hour doing some math and just crossed our fingers that these Bassett wheels would fit. We had seen some Miatas with the same wheel and tire package that we have currently with the Bassets and the uh, Handcooks fit on other Miatas, 
but it is really suspect, especially with the Miata sitting so low on the BC Racing coilovers. We spent probably an hour and a half putting on a wheel, slowly setting it down with the jack, seeing that it rubbed, lifting it back up, adjusting the coilover, setting it back down again. We did this like three or four times until you can see where it sits now. It might bump, but it won't rub, it won't scrape, it'll, as long as we don't go aggressively over a pothole or hit a speed bump at 20, 30 miles an hour, they should be safe for now until we can actually fully cut the fenders. Come on, bring it down. Oh, baby. Little baby Miata. Oh, bro. Little baby Miata. Little baby Miata, keep going. That's, it's off. That's it. Yo, no <laughs> shit. Yo, Yo, shit. Wait, Yo, put, check a finger, that bit, put a finger in there. Put a finger in there. <laughs> Oh, it literally like a knuckle. Yo. Yo, but really though? That's not bad at all. It's that's, touching. I mean, it's not, we didn't even max it out though, you know? We could definitely give it a couple more turns. Hell yeah. Yo, this is gonna fucking fit. <laughs> this car today. Let's do it. <laughs> On the front, the biggest concern was um, like steering angle. Where are we gonna be able to turn the wheel completely and not hit the car? And obviously we have a little bit more leeway than most Miatas because not having fenders kind of gives you that benefit. So the coming to the fronts, we had to just, once we got them on, we turned the wheel all the way to the right, and the fitment, Sam came over and saw the fitment. It's literally like the width of a finger between the back of the tire and the wheel well. <laughs> <laughs> you got Bro, a solid five fit, millimeters of clearance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my pinky in there exactly. and it would get cut off halfway through yeah bro but they would that's fit. why <laughs> it counts it counts dude. okay so once we had the fitment right we well we had another run in we had another situation where we thought we fucked up what you can see on the wheels the opening the center opening of the wheel does not sit on the hub of the miata like any other hub centric car should because you want the wheel to rest on the weight of the hub and then the lugs to just hold it there. So we did a little research and we realized that the Bassett racing wheels are lug centric, which would make sense for a racing wheel, I suppose. Because we know this car is gonna go to the track a lot, we know this car is gonna take a beating, we wanna go the extra mile, and we also wanna make these wheels hub centric. So we wanna have someone machine a piece, an adapter piece that we could put on these hubs and it would make the wheel fit perfectly center on the hub. And so they would, the wheels would then be hub centric and lug centric they would lock on, they would never move, they would be in place for any rough spots on the track. Everything would be perfectly safe and in place. They will be safe and in place just by getting the right lugs and having the lug-centric lineup just be perfect. But we do, because we know what this car is going to get involved in and we know what kind of beating this car is gonna take, we wanna have lug-centric and hub-centric if we can. At this point, we set the car down and we got all the wheels and the alignment right. We realized that the lifter tick that had been creeping up on the Miata it got really bad. And so what we want to do next is we want to take apart the top part of the engine, fix the valve tick, fix the lifter tick, make sure it sounds perfect and is running like the Energizer Bunny before we get it to the track next time.